Thank you, Professor Jain. First of all, it's a great honor to share the platform with you. So, in the morning, Professor Singh was talking about uh, his interaction with Herbert Simon and the gurus in Stanford. Uh, Professor Jain mentioned about uh, having dinner with Milton Friedman. Now, I, I, ha I also have bragging rights. So, when I go back to my students, I can say I, I shared the platform with uh, the great Deepak Jain. Right? So, uh, <laughs> So, uh, as a last speaker, I guess uh, even more things are thrown by the wayside because there has been so much discussion. So, I do have a short slide deck which I will go through very quickly, which sort of, uh, uh, again I am here on behalf of my dean because he is travelling. So, uh, the slide deck reflects our uh, outcome of our strategic planning process and specifically focuses on how we are trying to differentiate. But uh, perhaps before I go there, I will probably uh, have some random thoughts about things that came up. Uh, first thing I want, uh, which, which, which probably was already uh, uh, tacitly mentioned by all the speakers before, we are discussing uh, a global curriculum in an Asian context, not an Asian curriculum, because forget about the Tatas and the SQs and the Samsung and other successful companies. Even a small company, outsourcing company that does design and typeset, typesetting for a Chicago Sun newspaper, I believe there is one such company in Pune or Mumbai, Mumbai, or a company that actually uh, creates PowerPoint transparencies for the McKinsey in Kochi. Even they are global, they, they have a global clientele, so they need to understand how to operate in a global business place. So all the graduates that come out of business schools have to be global in nature, but because they are based in Asia, they need to have the Asian context. Right? So uh, a little bit about uh, NTU and Nanyang itself, uh, so we are one of the three local schools other than INSEAD and uh, ESSEC who are players here and as Dean George uh, sort of alluded to, in Singapore we have a fancy for ranking. So the Dean is always under pressure for ranking. So when uh, Professor Singh left us, we were at 24 in the FT ranking. Now we are about 40, obviously the university management doesn't like it but what we go back and tell them is we are actually the highest ranked. Uh, EMBA, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, self EMBA program after Wharton. We, we, we were 13 when we got into the ranking, now we are 8. And all the other schools above us are all uh, twin programs, except Wharton, right? So, uh, there was a, a discussion about executive education. Uh, I believe in executive, executive edu this is probably true for MBA as well. Uh, one of the challenges we face is, and, and this happens in companies too. Uh, a McDonald's uh, in the 90s will try to respond to a Taco Bell or a, or a Ponderosa or a other uh, restaurants and try to become me too and they try to expand the product range. Uh, Apple has always been under constant pressure. Whenever there is a new uh, launch, they talk about is Apple going to compete head on with Samsung and release low end products and so far they have resisted the temptation because there is still a lot of revenue to be earned through their uh, premium products. Uh, business schools also face the same pressure and what happens is that we all try to create Me Too products. So you, uh, uh, Pankaj Gamawat uh, alluded to it. What we do for globalization is uh, uh, everybody has uh, study missions uh, and things like that, projects. Uh, so uh, the, the silver bullet is obviously to find, find out differentiation. And in response to the comment here, actually maybe there are uh, hidden gems that do differentiate ourselves. It probably it's, we don't brag about it as much. So at NTU, we, we have had the MBA program for the last, we are coming close to 25 years now. We launched it in 91 and 92. And we were very different and we had a very entrepreneurial dean at that point in time who actually was one of the co-founders of, the one of the eight founders of the uh, SMU uh, University as well. Uh, so we, when we launched the MBA program, we had MBA program by specialization. And our uh, old alumni still regard that as a very great model because we had specialization in finance, accounting, technology, manufacturing and so on. And we were actually one of the first schools to, even before the, uh, the top American schools uh, started talking about study missions to the rest of the world, we were one of the first schools to do that. And uh, actually when I do my MBA briefing sessions for potential students, uh, we have a map where we show almost all the countries we have gone to and we say, I uh, joke that we have been to all countries except Antarctica, all continents except Antarctica, right? So, uh, but I don't think we have communicated that message well and of course that was an innovation 20 years ago, uh, which has been copied by others as well. Uh, the other challenge that takes place in curriculum design for MBA program is, uh, again alluded to, uh, MBA programs are shrinking in uh, duration, 
So even in uh, NBS, Nanyang Business School, we uh, reduced it from a 14-month program to a one-year program. And you still try to do everything. The projects, the... Uh, so we have a strategy project in Nanyang which starts in term one itself. And they have to finish it before they graduate. And we have all the other things. So something has to give. So for instance, the students don't go as much for uh, business case competitions and so on anymore because the program is shrunk. Uh, the other uh, uh, point I wanted to mention before I go to the uh, my slide deck itself is technical skills versus leadership skills. Uh, again, we are a predominantly uh, large undergraduate program. We take in about 600 undergraduate business students and 600 accounting students. And contrary to what Professor Tan uh, Chintong mentioned uh, before, we still are the best program in terms of quality. So in Singapore, we actually measure it based on what we call T15 the top 15% of the A-level cohort, and we still attract the highest. So the pecking order is like this. The top students go to medicine, then they go to law, and after that they come to NTU for accountancy and business. Right? So uh, that hasn't changed so much, even though uh, uh, I guess you, it depends on what dimension you measure the quality in. Right? So uh, what is required for an undergraduate program is very specific technical skills, because they don't of course, they, they are leaders in their own rights when they join the organization, but they don't go to senior management position for at least 15 years. So they need to have uh, specific uh, discipline level skills. Uh, the way the MBA programs are emerging is they are becoming more and more like EMBA. And if you look at uh, most MBA programs, it's hard to distinguish because they, are, they have leadership components. And they're going away from building functional skills. And the assumption is that they've worked long enough and they're going back to their area of uh, strength itself. Uh, that's not necessarily true for many of these schools that, uh, uh, that are represented in this audience. If you have uh, 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 MBA students being admitted directly from undergraduate, uh, they might be looking for a sort of a functional change. So uh, somehow in the, in the discussion process, uh, in the curriculum development process, the functional aspect is probably being sacrificed. And that's uh, one of the other points I wanted to bring up. So my slide uh, deck is actually very short. and. Uh, as I said, this is uh, based on reflection uh, of our management team. And these are st uh, st uh, slides that I've actually stolen from a dean itself. Uh, so the, the way we look at it is, uh, again, probably uh, this is uh, somewhat uh, known to everybody. Uh, most of the MBA programs have copied the curriculum models uh, from the US model as such, where the underlying premise of framework is economic rationality. So individualism prevails. Uh, each uh, econo actor or agent is uh, uh, assumed to be a rational economic agent. And so companies try to maximize profits. Uh, and we have transparent competitive markets that allocate resources optimally and efficiently. So uh, the strategy, planning, operations, and partnerships are guided by primarily by cost-benefit analysis. And uh, trust between partners is underpinned by a legal framework. Right? And there's a distinct relationship between a difference between personal and uh, professional relationships. Whereas the way East operates is there's a collective decision making. Even the firm structure is not clear most of the time because the stakeholders are not necessarily always the individual sh shareholders. You have family businesses and the way the family businesses operate in different countries is also different. The, there are government linked uh, corporations. In Singapore we have Tamasic linked companies. Uh, there are state owned enterprises in China, public sector companies in India and the structure in each of them is different. And uh, some of them I, I'd actually incorporate uh, Confucian elements into it, uh, including social responsibility and so on. Uh, traditionally, uh, typically, the, there are cultural nuances as well. So the organizations tend to be much more hierarchical in nature as opposed to flat structures in, uh, in Western multinationals. Uh, trust is always enhanced by personal relationship, Guangxi, and so on. Uh, and there is uh, a personal relationship substitute for professional management structures. And there is importance of giving face in relationships, so there is always lots of indirect communication. Uh, so what we believe is uh, to have a new way of uh, curriculum, where, of course, we need to have the foundations built on uh, uh, classical models of education. The concepts in accounting, finance, operations, marketing are not going to change, and that have to be uh, taught well. But layer that with the interdisciplinary uh, business uh, uh, education paradigm that melts the fundamental models with cultural, historical, and behavioral considerations. Right? So uh, uh, what we are trying to differentiate ourselves is by including non-traditional areas like cult cultural intelligence, culture science, sustainability, and social responsibility. So uh, 
by accident of design, we have over a period of time gained strength in culture research. We formed our Center for Cultural in, uh, Intelligence and uh, Leadership about uh, 12 years ago. And we are proud to say that we are one of the first centers to actually uh, develop a validated instrument for measuring cultural intelligence. So we call it CQ. So you have the uh, e IQ and the EQ and we have CQ. Uh, we, uh, when uh, uh, Jitendra was the dean, actually we started the Culture Science Institute, uh, which does fundamental research and culture science. For example, ask questions like, is cultural intelligence n nature or, or can it be nurtured? Uh, we, with funding from EDB, we started the Institute for Asian Con uh, Consumer Insights that does research on uh, insights about Pan-Asian consumers. We have done projects on defining what is Asian beauty and so on. And uh, uh, the Asian Business Case Center, uh, probably one of the first centers in this part of the world focusing on Asian cases, we started that about 16 or 17 years ago. Right? And uh, uh, most of our cases are actually uh, sold through all the platforms like Harvard and European Case Clearing House and so on. So taking all this into account uh, over the uh, strategic planning uh, process, what we decided that our key areas of focus will be what our dean calls the business of culture and culture of business and uh, business sustainability. So uh, sustainability is uh, closer to my heart because I teach uh, elective courses in sustainable operations and corporate sustainability. What we define as sustainability is strategies that help organizations sustain themselves as well as their people, the environment, uh, the resources, the natural resources, as well as the, uh, the uh, communities in which their value chains operate. Right? Uh, and the business of culture, I talked about the culture research, so uh, we need to uh, make sure that the, our students, uh, uh, we do research as well as disseminate knowledge about uh, how individuals and managers behave in different cultures, as well as about the uh, culture of specific businesses. How, do, how are decisions made in a Korean chaebol as opposed to a Tamasek? So if our graduates actually move from say, a American multinational or a German multinational to an Asian corporation, how do they, uh, can they develop frameworks with which they can actually start being very effective in the relationship right from day one? Right? Uh, so what we have done in this is uh, we have made uh, uh, cultural intelligence uh, sort of a compulsory module within our leadership module for all MBA and EMBA students. We haven't quite done that for uh, undergraduates yet because our undergraduate classes are very large and there are capacity resources. As far as sustainability is concerned, the university also does a lot of work on uh, water, energy and so on. So we have a one credit uh, uh, online course that all NTU students, all the 5,000 undergraduate students have to take. And in addition to that, uh, they are compulsorily required to take a sustainability elective in the undergraduate program. So all the functional areas offer electives in sustainability on sustainable operations, sustainable uh, green marketing and so on. And at the, at the graduate level, uh, we, uh, uh, Professor Gamawat mentioned about the three I's. Uh, I think what he called was interlocking, injection and uh, in infusion. So uh, I think we are, we are not sure what exactly we are doing, but we try to have sustainability as a component in many of the core courses and we also have elective courses in sustainability, right? Yeah. Uh, and this is our mission, we sort of, uh, yeah, we uh, nurturing global leaders for a sustainable world uh, that follows from the, the thought process that I discussed earlier. Right. So thank you.